Tapestry, brought to you each morning at this same time by the generous and loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. The Midwest Church of Christ is located at Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky, and we'd like to extend to you and to your entire family a warm and loving invitation to come and be with us in any and all of the services of the Midwest Church of Christ. Again, located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. Our order of services include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. is our first worship of the day. Then at 9.30, we have our um, uh, Sunday Bible School. And at 10.30, we have our second worship of the day. On Wednesdays, uh, we have our midweek Bible study. Um, uh, and our uh, at first session is at 10 a.m. in the morning, and our evening session is at 6.50. That's 10 minutes before 7. If you would like to study the Bible in the comforts of your own home, we have two ways that you can do that. One is the Bible correspondence course, that you can take by mail. The second is the personal home study where someone will come and sit down, study the Word of God right in the comforts of your own home. Either way, you give us a call at 774-3986 and uh, we'll register you today. Well, I say good morning to everyone. <laughs> Amen. Running a little little tight. We went to Indianapolis last night to watch Lamar Jackson play, and he did all right. I thought he did, you know, uh, for a rookie, uh, he did pretty good. Uh, you know, some of the, uh, the commentators, uh, read news uh, uh, paper writers, were the, uh, they didn't give him a, a glowing, but, uh, um, you know, he is making some progress. He's a work in progress in, in the pros. So God be with him and um, a, good, uh, a good pro uh, quarterback. Praise be un, unto God. We want to um, um, make a few uh, announcements. Um, our Midwest, Midwest Family Support Ministry Strengthening the Family Series is hosting um, the, the Grand Parenting Workshop this coming uh, Saturday, the 25th, and we hope that you will uh, be with us, um, all the grandparents, and uh, we want you to uh, get your grandchildren um, uh, there on Sunday. Bring those grandchildren on on Sunday. Make sure that the grandchildren are in are in the house on on Sunday morning. Because we want to we want to take a app, following that we want to take a take a picture of uh, uh, the grandchildren and uh, all of the grandchildren and uh, their grand and their uh, uh, grandparents okay so you all get that picture uh, get that uh, uh, there this coming uh, Sunday make sure all the grandchildren are there uh, with you praise be unto God we um, the Southwestern Christian College Southwestern Christian College uh, uh, is having their f uh, annual fundraiser uh, this coming uh, October the um, the twenty uh, seventh at five p.m. and it'll be here at the Midwest Church of Christ. 
and um, Family Life Center. So uh, let's make plans to um, uh, uh, to be uh, there. See Sister Deborah McGill uh, there at Midwest, okay? And it cost us $40 per person and $70 per couple. Uh, the Fishers of Men's class will begin um, um, September the 10th, Monday, September the 10th at 7 p.m. I want to urge you, if you have not take, taken the Fishers of Men's class, please register and sign up uh, today. Let Brother Joe Stevenson know that you would like to take the Fishers of Men's class. Praise be unto God. Today is Tuesday, and that means high noon uh, prayer service at, at 12 noon today. Bring your prayer request by, and uh, certainly you will be uh, blessed. Uh, um, um, so if you would, come out today at 12 uh, noon. Also, coming up... Uh, our community prayer walk will be the first uh, Thursday of the month, uh, and that is on uh, September the 6th. Uh, we hope that you will join with us um, and um, um, at 6.30 p.m. as we go into our community and pray. The Village Learning Center is taking applications now for after-school uh, program, uh, which will be coming up, uh, and we hope, trust, and pray that you will get those children registered. They'll start uh, September the 4th, uh, following the day following uh, the uh, Labor Day uh, break. So let's keep that in, in mind. In area-wide news, the um, Newburg Church of Christ is having their Ladies' Day um, program with, on uh, September the 8th, and we hope that uh, you will make plans to uh, go out and uh, uh, be with them at the Newburgh uh, Church of Christ. The Gray Road Church of Christ is having their youth extravaganza this coming um, uh, Saturday um, starts at uh, 9.20. Our registration starts at 8.45. So let's keep that in mind. Um, and then the Gray Road is having their 20th, uh, 26th uh, annual Gray Road uh, Season Saints Banquet. Um, uh, that um, will be Saturday, uh, September the 8th, uh, from 2 p.m. until 4.30 p.m. Uh, and it's going to be on the riverboat um, and uh, be a cruise on the riverboat and, uh, there. And um, the cost is $40 for adults. Um, Twenty dollars for children uh, four to twelve, and uh, uh, so let's keep that in in mind. Praise be unto God. Uh, Want to remember our sick and shut-in. Want to remember our uh, sister Beverly Bledsoe and sister uh, Bertha Fraser. Continue to pray for Sister Jacqueline Holman and pray, pray for uh, uh, Sister Don Marie Sizemore. Pray for Brother uh, Dean Chandler, Brother Johnny Miles, uh, uh, Brother Angelo uh, Pentegrast, and Brother David Wilson. Pray for our shut-in, uh, Sister Mamie Cartwright, Sister Louise Covington, Sister Sarah Cowan, Sister Mary Hunter, Sister Pearl Smith, uh, Sister Vivian Wakefield, and Sister Mary Wood, uh, and uh, pray for Brother James Frazier. Pray for those going through the dialysis and other treatments. I want to pray for our, our, uh, 
for uh, uh, Sister uh, Jessie Bennett, uh, Sister Darlene Hayes, Sister Angela Walls Gill, Sister Sheila Heiner, and Sister Sandy Hammond Schuler there in Evansville. Pray also for Brothers Jasper Crenshaw, Brother Dennis Reynolds, Brother Richard Rose, Brother Gary King, uh, Brother um, Frederick Himes, and my oldest brother, Marvin Stevenson, Jr. Pray also for um, Sister Rita Kamishi, um, and um, for God to be with her, and also pray for Sister Marion Mason and the McGill family and the loss of their son. Praise be unto God. Would you bow with me? Dear God and Father in heaven, as we come before you today, we, we are mindful that you are God, and besides you, there is no other. And we pr pr pray, dear God, that as we come today, that you would come and be and visit our sick and shut in, those going through di dialysis and radiation and chemotherapy. Pray for them, O oh God, and may you continue to bless them and bless them richly, Father, with all of your goodness. We know that you, you alone, are the hope of our lives. And we thank you. Thank you so much for uh, uh, looking after us with all of your goodness. Now we bring our sick and uh, shut in uh, before you. And may you uh, watch over them and bless them, Father, with all of your goodness. Now we pray for those who um, are, are bereaved this morning. We pray for Sister Marion. May you bless our dear sister, O oh God. You know what she's going through in her, in her life and in her heart. And I just ask, O oh God, for your grace to be with her, be with her family. And may they, they all come together with your good and with your mercy, O oh God. And now, bless this ministry today. And may everything we do be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For it's in the name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. I want to give thanks to those who supported the radio ministry this week. I want to, want to say thank you um, to Sister Linda Bird and Sister Rose Coleman. Brother Alvester Curry, Sister Tiana Curry, Brother Tony and Sister Chiquita Curry, um, so Brother Earl Fleetwood, uh, Sister Jacqueline Holman, uh, Brother James Malone, Sister Cynthia Purvis, Sister Ethel Rivers, Sister Angelica Robertson, Brother Clark and Sister Ellen Stanford, uh, uh, Brother Joe Stevenson, Sister Joey Stevenson, Sister Rita Stevenson, Sister Rosemary Thompson, Sister Marilyn Wester, and our dear friends, uh, uh, Brother David and Sister Rita Kamishi, and uh, Sister um, Nancy Marmon. Thank you all so much for your generosity and kindness towards this ministry. Um, and we know that our God will bless you richly. Would you? Yeah. Now, now let's open up our Bibles to the book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible, the word of God says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and it's in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree 
planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the uh, congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live in this new kingdom of God. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 3, the Bible, the word of God says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and they shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, he says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Now, Let's open up our Bibles to the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, and the verse is six. The word of the Lord says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, because they will be filled. Tuesday, August the 21st, 2018, our daily devotion entitled Hunger and Thirst. Hunger and Thirst are the body's way of telling us that we are empty. Our natural response to physical uh, hunger and thirst is to seek food and water to satisfy our need. Each Christian has an inner longing that only Jesus Christ's righteousness can satisfy. But we cannot be filled with righteousness if we are filled with self. Throughout the scriptures, throughout the scriptures, God emphasizes that the one who longs for him will, will uh, uh, for him with all his heart will find him. In Jeremiah 29, 13, as we crave righteousness, we will repent of our sins, and God will remove it from us. Our selfishness will, re will be replaced by the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, 
and self-control. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 through 23. The Spirit will make us to be like Jesus Christ. Righteousness is not to be taken lightly, nor is it easily attained. Holy, the Holy God, the Holy God does not give His righteous righteousness to people indiscriminately. He gives it to those who know they cannot live without him. Our desire then for his personal righteousness must be powerful, all-consuming, dominating everything we do. Pursuing righteousness means that we uh, value opin the, uh, the opinions of God far more than we treasure the opinions of people. Righteousness is not merely the absence of sin. It is allowing God to fill us with his holiness. Romans 6, 11. It is being like the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is our model uh, of one who, uh, a man who seeks after God's righteousness first, and then the Father glorifies us. Brothers and sisters, that's what we must do, is to be like Jesus. We are not only to seek the kingdom of God, but we are also to pursue his righteousness. And if, uh, we, and if we hunger and thirst for righteousness, we will be satisfied. And so is the readings from the books of the Lord, the book of Psalms, the first division, the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 through 12, and here in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse number 6. Now let's open up our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the chapter is 3. 1 Corinthians, the chapter is 3, and we'll begin reading at verse number 18. The Bible, the Word of God says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he might be made wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God with God, for it is written, He taketh the wisdom in their, the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether, a Paul, whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God. In this passage of Scripture, the Apostle Paul gives uh, the root, the root cause for the trouble with the Corinthian church. It was pride. 
pride in whom they were and in what they knew. Corinth. Corinth was a center for intellectual pursuit of and culture of their time. And some in the church were glorying in being part of an intellectual, highly educated, and cultural society. Sounds like, sounds like today, doesn't it? Amen, walls and lecture lights. They professed an intellectual, worldly knowledge, wisdom. Amen. They, they thought they had it going on profess to know more than most. And, and this same attitude was carried over when they came into the Lord's church. They professed to understand the scriptures and the ways of God better than most. They thought themselves wise enough to judge the value of different church leaders. They prided themselves in their ability to judge the truth. Uh, they were, amen, taking different men and criticizing the way they preached and ministered. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, amen, they were judging the rhetoric, uh, the uh, persuasiveness of their delivery, the logic of their arguments, the flowery description of their sentences. They were judging the ability and the gifts of men, and if they agreed that the abilities of men were what the church needed at a particular time, they were cooperative with them, my brothers and sisters. It is high time that these men and women of, of Corinth be brought down to where God wanted them to be. And they had one in their midst that they talked about said he, he, you know, he could write real good letters. But hey, hey, if you look at him, if you look at him, he ain't much to look at. Uh, he, he's got a speech impediment. Uh, so something, he, he's got a lot of flaw. They, 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 so they began to, uh, gather themselves around uh, who they who they were going to uh, um, follow. Some said we'll follow Peter, who are our Cephas, and some said we'll follow the uh, uh, Apollos because he's an eloquent uh, uh, preacher, and some said the Apostle Paul. And because they wanted good, strong teaching. And then some said, well, we'll follow Jesus. My brothers and sisters, he asked the question again, is Christ divided? Was the apostle Paul crucified? Was a Cephas crucified for you? Was Apollos crucified for you? Yes, my brothers and sisters. We see the answer to this divisiveness and this uh, worldly wisdom is to watch out for your self-description of yourself that you be not deceived. Secondly, you need to renounce worldly wisdom. And thirdly, you need to renounce glorying in men. Brothers and sisters, there's an answer 
to all of the, the problems that we have in the church when folk began when the folk began to um, began to uh, to form cliques and divisions and divisiveness in the church, the first thing you do is watch out for yourself. Don't let yourself be the problem. Let no man, he says, deceive himself. There is a there is a, a charge uh, that helps you and I and every person who reads 1 Corinthians 3, 18. The church ha had some unusual advantages uh, over many other churches. They had success, in, uh, had access to the scriptures, and they enjoyed the scriptures and the ways of God. They enjoyed philosophy and theology and were a, in a great city where both uh, were freely. But God said, listen, don't get wrapped up in yourself. Why? Because yourself can deceive you. The Corinthian church had a serious problem of self-deception. They wanted to know, be known as intellectual, well-educated, and very capable in understanding the world, the world and God. They enjoyed thinking through and rationalizing. Y'all, y'all know how folk are today, they get into this mindset because of their academic skills and their vocational uh, employment that they have arrived and everybody else has to, amen, uh, bend to, the, uh, to their knowledge because they, they are well prepared and well understood, uh, amen. And so what God is saying, you be careful when you get to that point in your life because I, God says you have gotten wise, uh, amen, in your own mind. And what God does to the wise is he makes them to be foolishness before him. The Bible says in the book of uh, Luke 18, Jesus himself said, and he spake this parable unto uncertain which trust in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. God knows that there's some people who think that they've got it all together. And you know, they despise they despise others. Let me let me tell you something. You you need to uh, you know I in my lifetime I've met some uh, people that you know your first impression your first impression of them uh, was you know who is this person? Why are they dressed the way they are? Why do they look the way? They don't have to look that way. Until you walk in, the Indians had a, a proverb, until you walk in another man's moccasins. Let me be clear to you. You know, Brother uh, Randall Holloway, Brother Randall Holloway was a very different kind of, of a man. Brother Holloway, if you saw him, you would say, oh, he don't know anything. He He's just an old, uh, old guy who's done run into some hard times and and uh, he uh, really won't, don't know. 
uh, uh, you, you feel sorry for him and you, you, you just say, okay, go on over here, Brother Holloway. But let me tell you all something. Brother Randall Holloway was a very intellectual, college degreed intellectual, uh, a man. And uh, let me be clear. He knew the Old Testament from a man from Genesis to Malachi. It was almost, I didn't think there was anything Brother Holloway didn't know about the, the, the Old Testament. If you needed to know something, you go to Randall Holloway because Brother Holloway, he could run it down for you. But, you know, when you looked at Brother Holloway, you wouldn't have thought he knew anything. But it was the circumstances of his life. When his wife died, Brother Holloway decided that the riches of this world didn't matter to him. And so he lived the life of a, of a man that just plain and simple. And, that's, and that was it. And, and you write, Sister Jaquate, see some of them, some of you, some of the members remember Brother Holloway. But they learned, but Brother Holloway taught me one thing. Don't judge a book by its cover. That's why we should never judge people that we meet. We, we may, and that's why the Bible tells us, be careful how you meet a stranger. For you may entertain, you may entertain angels unawares. That's right, Sister Marilyn. He was a very humble and wise man. But if you just looked at him, you would have said, oh man, you would have paid him no never mind. But if you got to know Brother Randall Holloway, the wisdom of the world would have turned their backs on him. But, the, but, but he humbled himself. He humbled himself and God gave him wisdom. Yes, God knows how to give you the right wisdom. The problem is men glory in worldly wisdom. The wisdom of this world. Worldly wisdom is natural reason only. It is the wisdom of men that seeks to know the truth of the world and the truth of God by natural reasoning. Men readily acknowledge the problem of evil and suffering in the world caused by such things as natural disasters and disease, hunger, selfishness, greed, violence, hug, hunger, lust, accidents, prejudice. They, they, they get all of that. But only a few come to understand the depths of all evil that it is rooted in the garden and it is wrapped up in man's self-will uh, and self-desire de uh, for sin. Don't ever try to deal with this because only when you know God and you trust the Lord will you find out the wisdom of this world really isn't wise at all, but it is just the foolishness of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man. So God, God, ha, eh, eh, uh, evil has brought the world into a, a, tur a turmoil, that's why you have disasters. Sin. Sin is the, is the problem that man has. The wise men of this world, they don't understand. They, don't, they do not understand. Worldly wisdom is superficial. 
What do you mean by that? I mean that it is only it only appears to be wise. It seemeth uh, means to think. The man the, the man thinks himself to be wise and and creative, knowledgeable and intellectual. He thinks he has uh, a novel ideal or a concept of God. Most men think. Most men think they are fairly wise and knowledgeable uh, in how to handle uh, their lives and, and the affairs uh, and issues that they go through in their life. Few think they will be uh, totally unacceptable and rejected by the higher being we call God. Some, you know, some people, many, many people just, they just refuse to believe <laughs> that you got to humble yourself before God. That God makes men wise. And yet, many people today believe that they are, they are already good enough for God. God himself is the only way that we can become wise. Jesus said, a wise man built his house upon a rock. And he says that the, the, the winds blew, the rains came, the floods rose, and the, and the strong winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not because it was founded upon a rock. The wise man, the foolish man, goes and builds his house upon the sand. The floods came, the wind, the, the rains came, and the strong winds blew, and, it, and the floods aroused and, the, and beat upon that house, and the house fell. And the Bible says, and great was the fall of it. For it was founded upon the sands. My brothers and sisters, what God is saying to you and to me, do not be wise in your own, in your own de demise because the wisdom of this world, the, the wise of this world, has God made to be foolishness. Brothers and sisters, it is high time, high time that we be like God the Apostle Paul, as he's writing to the church here at Corinth, we need to recognize that we too can become self-seated, self-motivated, uh, self-this and self-that. We've got to come to realize we need the Lord our God more than we need anything else. That's why Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The apostle Paul says, now, here's what you got to do. You got to realize that you came in this world naked, and in this world, you will leave naked. Amen. You may have a three-piece suit on. You may have the best dress, but let me be clear. When you go on the other side and stand before God, you will stand before him buck naked, period. <laughs> and, it's what, and, it's, and it's what you have done for the Lord Jesus Christ will, for, will stand with you. Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. Henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow you. My brothers and sisters, we are all are going to face that judgment day. Don't let our wisdom, don't let the wisdom of this world, don't let the flattery of men uh, and the cunning craftiness of the wicked be able to toss you to and fro. Get into the word of God. Be settled. Settle your life in, in, in the word of God, that the word of God will be your answer to everything 
in this life. God bless you. We're going to open up the prayer line this morning. And if you would like to have prayer, I want you to give us a call at 571-1240. 571-1240. We'll pray with you and we'll pray for you that our God may strengthen your life and the life of those around you. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Come to Jesus today. Come to Jesus and let him, let him be your wisdom. Let him be your guide. Praise God. Hello, caller. This is Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we help you? Good morning, Brother Jerry. How are you? I am blessed and highly favored. And how's Brother Kevin this morning? Oh my my! Thank you. Yes, yes, uh, yes. I, 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 don't, I don't understand what's going on mm -hmm. with my child because this internet thing is a monster if it's not used the right way. That's right, that's right. And, 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 and she's caught up into something that is all wrong. And, and I, I ask God and to pray for her. Yes, yes. Because I'm concerned for her safety. Yes, yes. And her well being. Praise and my God. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Good morning and radio land to everyone. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Keep, keep Brother Kevin in prayer. We feel you. We know. We know the struggle that, that, that you're going through. And may our God be with you. Praise be unto God. Uh, Sister Margaret um, uh, Malone is asking us to pray for that driver who... who uh, hit and killed her young their youngest daughter and uh, may 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 he turn himself in may he turn himself in may our God be uh, be with sister Margaret and and brother James and all of the family we know we know the struggle uh, Latoya is with us this morning and uh, our prayers are with her and uh, all of our young people, let's pray for them. Praise be unto God. 571-1240. 571-1240. Again, we want to remind you to keep uh, uh, Sister Marion uh, in prayer. and Sister Rita Kamishi, keep her in, in prayer. Uh, and all of those who are going through sickness. Brother Kevin is going through some uh, real uh, uh, trauma in his life right now. Keep our, our dear brother uh, in, in prayer. 571-1240. Uh, those of you on Facebook Live, if you have a prayer request, you can send that in to us. Again, I want to remind you, of the grandparents workshop this coming Saturday, uh, the uh, uh, 25th from 9 until uh, 3 p.m. Great, great program, great program that um, we, we have uh, uh, for you. Um, the grandparents, uh, uh, the 
morning. It will be devoted, the workshops will be devoted uh, to the grandparents' legal um, rights uh, as in, with, within the law and, um, and, uh, and, the, and policies of our, of our state. So we, we're going to be looking at that on how to bring those, uh, get grandparents their rights. Um, and we know that our God is able. Um, you'll hear uh, God's plan uh, for grandparenting. The state of, of children uh, and grandparents in Kentucky, I shared with you that uh, Shannon, Ms. Shannon Moody, of the Kentucky Youth Advocates are going to put the landscape. You know, Kentucky has the highest number of uh, percentage of of uh, grandparents raising their grandchildren in in the United States. You didn't know that, did you? Well, you come out Saturday. You come out Saturday morning. You will be blessed. You will be blessed, and we look forward to it. And we hope, trust, and pray that uh, you'll join with us in, in this uh, uh, program uh, this coming Saturday. We also uh, will have um, the child protection and grandparenting uh, support. Miss Lena Moorhead from the Kentucky uh, Cabinet for Health and Family Services will um, be on hand uh, to, to, to do that. Um, and uh, um, we are uh, just excited about that. Uh, we, you know, what, what, what are your legal rights? When, when, they, when, when your grandchildren are taken from your children, what rights do you have to get those grandchildren uh, in in your care versus putting them in foster care. Those are, those are questions are, that are going to be answered for you this coming Saturday. Um, and so you, we urge everyone, everyone, make plans to be out. You say, well, I'm not a grandparent. Well, let me be clear. The information you have, you, can, you will be blessed to know what God is expecting and why God wants you to be engaged with your parents and uh, the children's grandparents. You need to know this kind of information that's going to be shared. So God bless you. We look forward to you being with us. Dear God and Father in heaven, as we come this morning, we pray that you will bless, bless this morning and thank you for allowing all of us to be a part of it. Now, as we go throughout this day, would you bless, bless your word and bless us with your goodness. I pray this prayer and I ask all things in the name of Jesus. Amen. My time is up for today. I've enjoyed being with you. I look forward to being with you again on tomorrow. Until then, know this, our God loves you, and so do I.